Hey everyone, so in this lecture, we are going to compare Python lists to NumPy arrays. The reason I want to do this is because in most programming languages, such as C++, Java, Ruby, PHP, and so forth, arrays are the go-to method of storing items in a sequential data structure. In Python, however, lists take on that role. And somewhat confusingly, they do have a lot of similarities. Like the way you access an item in a Python list is the same way you would normally access an array. And so this lecture is all about answering the question, in what ways do they behave differently, and in what ways do they behave the same? So before we start, I'm going to assume that by now, you have Google Colab set up, or you are using IPython or Jupyter Notebook, or some other REPL on your local machine. Otherwise, you may want to go back to the previous lecture, where I discussed where to find external resources on how to get set up. One extra thing I want to mention is that, in this course, I'm going to use the convention, one notebook per section. Since these sections are quite short, it's most definitely manageable. So this entire NumPy section will be in this notebook, and you can look at the table of contents to skip to any particular lecture. So you go here on the side to get to the table of contents, and then you can skip to any lecture you want. So for example, if I want to skip to the dot product lecture, I just click this and I arrive in the doc product lecture. And this is if you're looking at the pre-written notebook. But anyway, since this is the pre-written notebook, let's go to a fresh notebook so that you can code along. So first, let's start by importing NumPy. So we do import NumPy as MP, and that works as expected. There's no output for that. Now let's create a list containing the items 1, 2, 3. So that's L equals 1, 2, 3. Okay, now let's create an array containing the same items. So in NumPy, you would do that like this. A equals np.array, and then you pass in that same list, 1, 2, 3. Now let's do what is probably the most common task with lists and arrays, which is to loop through each item in the array and do something with that item. Since we don't have anything to do per se, we're just going to print each item. So let's see how we can do that with a list. So we do for e and l print e. All right, and that prints each of the items as expected. Next, let's do the same thing with an array. So we do for e and a, print e. Okay, and that does the exact same thing. Now let's consider another common task, adding a new item to a list. So as you may recall, this can be accomplished with the append function. So we do l.append for, and then if we look at what L is now, we see that it contains the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. But what happens if we try to do that with a NumPy array? So let's see. So we do a.append4. And as you can see, there is no method called append. And so why is that? Well, generally speaking, the size of a list can change, but the size of an array is fixed. There are other ways to kind of add items to an array, but these actually instantiate a new array. If you're more advanced in programming, maybe you understand why that might be the case in terms of memory storage and efficiency. In any case, let's consider a similar scenario where we can try to add a new item to a list. So another way of doing this is to simply add two lists together. So kind of like a concatenation. So if I take our list L, which contains one, two, three, four, and I add it to another list, which contains only five, then I get one, two, three, four, five. So this plus operation means concatenate when applied to lists. So how about arrays? Well, since our array only contains the elements one, two, three, let's try to add a four. So let's do A, plus np.array4. OK, 
and we get 567. Now that's interesting. What happened was, it seems the element 4 got added to every element of A. In fact, we call this broadcasting in NumPy nomenclature. Technically, in mathematics, this is an illegal operation. You can't add two vectors of different sizes. But in NumPy, this makes perfect sense. Imagine that you wanted to add a 4 to each element in A. It would be expensive if you had to repeat the 4 multiple times to make it the same size as A. Instead, NumPy is intelligent, and it knows that you want to add a 4 to each element of A. Another important thing to realize here is that NumPy is all about doing math. So that explains why, in NumPy, using the plus operator actually does a mathematical operation, namely addition, whereas a Python list does not have any such capability. Now, it's worth asking, what if I want to do vector addition? Let's say I want to add the vector 1, 2, 3 to the vector 4, 5, 6. Well, let's see what happens. So we're going to do a plus np.array456. All right, we get the expect result. You can check this on paper if you would like. So notice that the plus operator is intelligent. It broadcasts when you try to add a scalar to an array. And if you add an array to an array, it does regular vector addition. Now, let's say I wanted to add the vector 4, 5 to the vector 1, 2, 3. So let's give that a try. So we can take this and just delete the 6. OK, so that gives us an error. Of course, that makes complete sense because you can't add vectors of different sizes. Now, let's go to a different topic, scalar multiplication. So multiplication is pretty intuitive. If I have a vector a and I multiply it by 2, it's just going to give me 2 times every element of that vector. We would expect that in NumPy, typing out 2 star a would in fact perform this operation. So let's see what happens. So we do 2 star a. OK, and as expected, this does indeed do the mathematical operation 2 times a. What about lists? So we do 2 times l. All right, so that's interesting. It gives us list l repeated 2 times. So with lists, the multiply operator does repetition, while for arrays, it does multiplication. And obviously, this means you can multiply a list by a non-integer number. And by the way, if you did something like L plus L, we would see that this does the same thing. So L plus L. Okay, we get the same answer. So it's actually kind of interesting that even though this does something different than what we would expect mathematically, it's still the case that L plus L returns the same thing as 2 times L. Now, let's say for some reason we really want to use a list to do vector addition or multiplication, or we are not allowed to use NumPy. That might be the case, for example, if you're taking a class on C++ or JavaScript. Well, let's see how we might do that. The most basic way is to use a for loop. So let's say we want to add a 3 to each element in L. So I'll create a new list, call it L2. And then I'll loop through each element in L. So for E and L. And then for each element, I add 3 and append the result to L2. So L2.append E plus 3. Okay, and at the end of this, I can print out L2. And I can confirm that 3 has indeed been added to each element in L. Now, another way you could do this is with list comprehensions. So, so that would just be L2 equals square bracket E plus 3 for E in L. And let's check the answer. Okay, and we get the same result as expected. One nice thing about this is that it's very flexible. So let's say we wanted to square each element in L. 
Of course, we can't do L star star 2. So let's try that. So L squared. Okay, so that gives us an error saying unsupported operand. But of course, we could just create a new list L2, loop through each element in L, and then append E star star 2 to L2. So let's try that. So L2 equals empty list for E in L, L2 dot append E star star 2. Okay, and if we check L2, it works as expected. Now, of course, this would be way easier in NumPy. So if we just do a star star 2, this gives us an array with each element squared. And so that brings up another important aspect of NumPy. If you ever apply a function to a NumPy array, it very often operates element-wise. So for example, you can take the square root. That would be np.sqrt of a. And we get the square root of all the elements. Or you can take the log. So we do np.log of a. Okay, and you get the log of a. Or you can take the exponential. So we do np.exp of a. And that's the exponential of a. Now, another common function in deep learning is the hyperbolic tangent. So that's np.tan h of a. Now, remember, I want you to be aware that there are many more functions which I haven't discussed in the lecture. For example, trigonometric functions. This isn't about being exhaustive. It's about understanding the basic principles. Obviously, if you can do this, it's zero more effort to apply, say, the sine function. Well, I would hope that it should be. Anyway, to summarize this lecture, what could we say? Well, I think a neat way to summarize this lecture is that a list looks like an array, but it works more like a generic data structure. On the other hand, a NumPy array exists specifically to do math.